Welcome back everybody to another VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are gonna be covering a new topic. We're gonna to be talking about how to create user forms inside of Excel VBA. So this is a very popular topic I know with certain individuals and this is kind of gonna be our introduction to it. I have a couple user forms that I've already built and so we're just gonna kind of you know, at certain points, it's probably going to be multiple, multiple videos, but they're going to show you how to do different things like, you know, connect to a database. Uh, in this particular one, we're going to be covering how to export certain Excel objects into different applications. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Not necessarily going to say this is something I would release to somebody and say, oh, have fun with it. It doesn't have a ton of functionality, but at least it's going to kind of show you how you would go about um, tackling that particular type of problem. And then also, this is kind of going to be our introduction to forums in general because I am planning to start a series with the JavaScript API where we will build add-ins for Excel. So a lot of exciting stuff coming up. But you might be guessing, what is this user form going to do? Well, I kind of already told you a little bit, but I'll show it to you because it's better when you show it. All right, so first things first is you're gonna create a nice little user form like this. The whole idea behind it is that it will populate a dropdown of all the objects inside your Excel workbook. Well, in this case, just one particular sheet. And then from here, you can select that object and then you can specify if you would like this object exported to PowerPoint or Word. So just two applications. And then finally, whether you would like it linked or not. So a linked OLE object, if you don't select linked, it would just be a regular OLE object. And then obviously, if you click export, it will do its little thing and it will basically copy that object over to the specified application as the data type that you specified. So nothing super complicated. You wouldn't be able to use this to say, hey, which slide and you know, so on and so on. It's not to say you can't do that, but for simplicity's sake, I really didn't want to make it more complicated than it had to be. This is just doing a very, very basic task at this point, which is copying an object and then exporting it to the specified location. So that's what we're going to be building in this particular series. So from here, I'm going to exit out of that, brings me back to my VBA editor. And actually what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be exiting this workbook. So we're gonna be writing everything from scratch and building everything from scratch. So I'm gonna close out this one. And then of course, there's my little audio recorder. And then from here, I have the same exact workbook. It's you know just a duplicate copy. But if we go into the Visual Basic Editor, you will notice there is no form. There is a module inside of it. So the module is called Show User Form. This will be what we're using to display the user form and populate your drop downs for you. So with that being said, let's kind of just do the bare bone minimum at this point, we will create our user form. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Microsoft Excel objects, I can do right click, insert, and then I have an option between user form module and class module. In this case, I want a user form module, nice little user form will pop up, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger might not look exactly like the one I showed you before, but I'm gonna to try to get as close as possible. So I'm gonna make sure it's nice and big so that way everyone can use it. And then I'm gonna add a couple control objects. These control objects are simply items that exist within a user form. So the first one that I'm gonna do is a text frame. And that one is right here. So it's at the end. I'm gonna grab this. And this is kind of a nice little outline so it kind of helps encapsulate a bunch of different controls and everything like that. I try to make sure that it's about the same. And as long as that is good to go, then from here, I'm gonna add in, I think it's th two labels or three labels. I think it's three labels. Um, and then a couple buttons and some combo boxes. And so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a combo box right about there. That's close enough. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider so that way it's kind of easy to see everything. Usually what I do is if I wanna make sure things are looking consistent, um, I do wanna make sure that um, I copy it. 
And then once we're done with that, we'll kind of go through and, and label everything the way it needs to be labeled. And so I'm gonna grab a label control. And then from here, I'm going to copy that again. And then I'm gonna put it right about here. So I try to make things where they're nice and aligned. Sometimes it doesn't always work like that, but you know, be what it is. Okay, and then I'm gonna also do a checkbox. So the checkbox is where we're gonna specify whether we want the object linked or not. So be right about like that. And then we'll add our two buttons. Where are they, our little buttons? Okay, we have one command button. Uh, we'll put it kind of right about there. And then we'll make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll kind of maybe do it where it has a little bit of spacing into it. And then I'll copy that. And then I think that's three in. So again, it might not look exactly like the one I showed you, but it's pretty close for the most part. From here, what are we gonna do next? Well, let's go through and actually make sure everything is labeled the way it needs to be labeled. Because sometimes if you don't do that, uh, certain problems can kind of pop up that we don't necessarily want. And so from here, the first thing I'll do is I'll select my entire user form and then I'll give it a name. So this is a name that we can reference it from VBA. In this case, I will call it Excel Export Form. I think that's what I did. Yeah, that's what I named it in the code. And then from here, I'm gonna change a couple of different properties about it. So for example, um, maybe what I want to do is change the font. You can change the font to whatever you want it to be. On my system, I actually have installed some custom fonts. So there's one I really like called Roboto, and I usually like the regular one, and I like it to be 10. And then from here, that will make sure that we kind of apply that all to the, um, the same objects from here on out. And then from here, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change the background color. And so I'll select my back color and I want it to be you know, just white. Same with my little text frame. What I'll do here is I'll change that to white as well. Um, something you can also do is if you want, you can actually select the object in question. And if you go back down here, you can say back style transparent. And so that will basically make it transparent. So whatever the uh, color is of the object behind it, that's kind of what will carry through. And then also I will make sure this is transparent. I th don't think you can do that with the frame object. I think the frame object is um, does not have a transparent property about it. And then technically you can also change all those properties inside the VBA code yourself if you wanted to when you're loading that particular um, form. So, so far all we've done is we've changed some coloring, we've given this one a unique identifier that we can reference inside of VBA. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it an actual name, well, kind of like a caption that you would see at the top. And so here, I'm just gonna give it something like export manager. That's something that kind of gives you some context as to what it might be doing. From here, I'll take my frame object and I'll change that um, caption to be export details. Details. And then I'm gonna also um, change the property about that particular um, or not the property, the name of that actual control object. And then I can just say um, export details frame. You do want to try to give it something that you can remember when you're writing the code if you need to reference it, because the last thing you're going to want is a bunch of different labels, like label one, label two, label three, and you can't remember which label number goes with which particular property. And so that looks good. Oh. I do have to change the font on this one again too. So what I'm gonna do, that's usually, so here's a little trick. If you wanna make sure it's all the same, usually before I, um, I actually import or I actually set any particular objects, what I'll do is I'll actually um, change the font of the entire form itself before I insert any objects because what that will do is it will make it where you don't have to change each individual control like I'm doing right now. You can just, whatever you 
put in there, it's just going to carry over the font that it found in the actual form object. So that kind of helps you save some time. And if you're kind of nitpicky like me, it saves you a lot of hassle to say the least. Uh, and then what I'm also going to do is I'll change this one. Uh, and then I'll do Roboto and then I'll do regular 10 and so on. Um, I just like Roboto because for me, I think it's a little bit cleaner. I think it's a more of a modern font. I don't personally like Calibri or Arial or anything like that. I think Roboto is kind of that nice uh, sans serif one that, that's a little bit easier to read. So that's just my opinion. Um, you can take it for what it is. I'm sure some people don't like it. Uh, the only downside is you kind of have to install this font, but it's free. So if you go to googlefonts.com, it actually has um, all the fonts that you can download for free. So pretty cool stuff, I think so at least. Okay, so we've done that. We've now taken care of our details frame. Let's take our first label. We will call it the application, no, sorry, the object label. And then we want the caption to just be object. And then, you know, we'll just put a colon at the end, make things easier. And then from here, what we'll also do is we'll change the second label to be application with a colon. And then we will call it the application label. Again, this just makes it easier where you can reference things. With the combo box, what we'll do is we will call it the object combo box. And then we will call the second one the application combo box. So pretty straightforward. Again, my naming conventions aren't anything super unique, but at least I have an idea of what they're being used for and what type of control they are, because that does make it a little bit easier down the road. Because if you can't remember the control type, there might be certain properties that are only associated with certain types of control. So I try to leave the control type name inside the actual name itself. And then from here, we will call this one the linked check, oh no, check box. Oh, and that's a capital B. And then the caption we'll give it is linked, question mark. So it's kind of like asking the user, hey, do you want it to be linked or not? We'll take our command button. We'll call this one cancel button. And then this, we'll say the word cancel. We also want it to be Roboto as well. And then we want it to be regular size 10 font. And then we'll take our command button two. We'll say export button. It will have the caption export. And then we'll change the font again to Roboto, regular, and 10. Okay, so at this point, visually, we've now created our form. There's really no functionality behind it, but it's here. So technically, if you wanted to, um, what you could do is you can actually show this form, but what you need to do first is you have to write the code to show the form. And so it's not too complicated. We're gonna create a new subroutine. So I go now into my modules show user form module. I create a new, um, you know, what is a new subroutine? I'll say show uh, export form. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a couple object variables at this point. There's only gonna be one. And it's gonna be dim export user form as Excel export form. So that will create, well, that's basically declaring an object that is going to be our export form object. And then from here, we need to create a new instance of the export form. And so we'll set our export user form object. Make sure you wanna make sure it's spelled correctly. And that's going to equal a new instance of our Excel export form object. From here, we can show our form. Is that two spaces? That's two. No, it's one. And so we'll take our export user form and we'll call 
the show method. Now, a couple things with this. There is a property called modal. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. And with this one, you'll see, where is it? VB modal and VB modal lists. I believe, we'll just try it out. Uh, mode lists is basically you can actually interact with the Excel or whatever application you're in. You can actually interact with it behind it. Otherwise, it's kind of locked in place. Did it not work? Uh, God. Hold on. I have to remember now what it was. And then from here, oh no, don't do that. Object doesn't support named arguments. Export user form, export user form, Excel export form. Okay, well that's kind of strange. Okay, so here is our form at this point. As you can tell, I can't click anything behind the form itself, but if I go back in to my um, VBA editor, what I can do is I can actually change it to VB modeless. That's really strange because I swear it gave me the ability to do that, but maybe it's just me because I did it in another one. But you can see when I change it to mode list, I can actually select the um, the information behind the user form. So that's really that does come in handy, especially if you're going to create a user form that depends on anything related to a selection. You're going to want to make it mode list. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard for the user to kind of use your particular form. So you know, just keep that in mind. It, a lot of it is really the intent behind the user form. If you need something from the user, you probably should make it mode list. If you're really worried that the user is going to break something, if they go outside your form, then you probably would not want to make it modeless because then they can do something like that. But you can tell at this point, it's just a form. There's really nothing here. It's just visually kind of what it's going to look like. Um, but what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to actually start adding some of the functionality to our form. And so really the first thing that we're going to do is I want to be able to populate the user form when we show it, we want to be able to populate those combo boxes with the objects inside our particular Excel workbook. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. At this point, if you kind of have any questions about designing your user form, um, what kind of control maybe you should be using, or you know, just things along that nature, feel free to put them down in the comments below. And as always, I'll try to get back to you. And then, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, you want to make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We will see you in the next video.